In the previous week, the two main series for comparison were the geometric series and the zeta series. Both of these series had a parameter, the common ratio for the geometric series, and the exponent labeled p for the zeta series. Now I want to rethink those two examples. Instead of, of thinking of them as having a parameter, why don't I think of them as functions? If x is a variable, I can define a function f of x as the infinite series from 0 to infinity of x to the n. I know from the geometric series that this evaluates to 1 over 1 minus x. But now I have a different way to write that function as a series. What is the domain of this function? Well, this function only makes sense if the series converges. Otherwise, the series is not a number and therefore the function has no output. Therefore, the domain is the parameter limitations of the common ratio, negative 1 to 1. Well, now I have a function defined by a series, and the domain is the places where the series converges. I could do the same thing for the zeta series. By writing x instead of p for the exponent, I have a function zeta of x given by the series. The domain of this function is the value of the exponent for which the series converges. Well, that's all x strictly greater than 1. Well, now I have another function defined by a series, with a domain of all values of x for which the series converges. This actually explains the name zeta series that I've been using in this course. This function here is the zeta function and is a very famous function in mathematics with a rich history. There is even still a famous conjecture about the zeta function, the Riemann conjecture, which is one of the most well-known unsolved problems in mathematics. This zeta function is defined by this series. That is its definition. From these two examples, let me generalize. Instead of the terms of a series a n just being some numbers that depend on the index n, they can be functions a n of x, which involve a variable x. In this way, I get a series with a variable in it. Then I can ask if this series makes sense, just as I did last week. However, there is a variable, so it may converge for some values of x and may diverge for others. Well, that gives me the domain of a function. Where x allows the series to converge, the function makes sense, and otherwise the function doesn't make sense. If I have a variable in my series, the convergence and domain are exactly the same thing. And in this way, I can use series to build new functions. This is, in fact, the main way that series are used in mathematics. Everything we've done so far for the last two weeks has really been all building the tools and understanding for this definition, series as functions. There are many ways to build functions out of series. In this course, I'll focus on just one, power series. The idea is to generalize a polynomial. So let me recap, what is a polynomial? Well, it's a sum of whole powers of the variable with various coefficients, c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared, up to some cdx to the d. The number d is the degree of the polynomial. I can write a polynomial with sigma notation. Each term has a power of the variable x to the n and a coefficient cn, and the sum stops at degree d. Well, what if I didn't stop? What if I just let the polynomial keep going, adding more and more terms with no ending at all? Then, instead of stopping at degree d, I get an infinite series that goes on forever. This is a power series. It's essentially an infinite degree polynomial. x is still the variable, and the terms still have a power of the variable xn and a coefficient cn. This is not quite the most general form. This is a power series which we say is centered at zero. The most general form of this has powers of x minus alpha, and is called a power series centered at alpha. If you expand all the x minus alpha to the ends out, you still get the same thing, an infinite degree polynomial. But it is going to be useful for the series that we're going to work with to be able to shift the center point by replacing x with x minus alpha. So this will be the most general form of a power series. Then, as with all infinite series with a variable, this is a function with domain x, which is all x where this series converges. Let me show you some examples of how this works. Here's a power series centered at the point negative 2, so I have powers of x plus 2. x plus 2, of course, is x minus negative 2. The coefficient is 1 over n squared. Each power is multiplied by this coefficient, and the coefficient involves the index, but not the variable. Convergence for a power series is always calculated by ratio test. 
The ratio test asked me to take the ratio of the n plus 1 term over the nth term. Well, here's that ratio. The top fraction is the term with n plus 1 instead of n, and the bottom fraction is just the nth term. I simplify this nested fraction as usual, which leaves me with this expression. The powers of x plus 2 will cancel off almost entirely, leaving just an x plus 2, and then the two other pieces will end up with n squared over n plus 1 squared. Now this limit. This is a limit in the index n. That means that the limit doesn't actually care about the variable x. Anything without the index n can be pulled out of the limit. So I'll pull out x plus 2. There's an absolute value here, which is from the ratio test setup, which uses absolute value to define the limit. And I can't drop that, since I don't know if x plus 2 is positive or negative. But then I can evaluate the limit. Asymptotically, this is n squared in both numerator and denominator, with leading coefficients of 1, so this limit is 1. The result of all of this is the expression x plus 2. Then, the ratio test says the series converges if this expression is less than 1. And that gives me a domain. The domain of this function is negative 3 to negative 1, which is all numbers where the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 1. Here is another example. The center is 0 here, so we just have powers of x, no alpha here at all. The coefficient is n factorial. Again, I use the ratio test. I've not shown the original nested fraction, but it simplifies down to this expression. All but one power of x cancels, which will always happen with power series in the ratio test, and I pull out the absolute value of x. Then I have a ratio of factorials, and ratios of factorials mostly cancel out, in this case leaving n plus 1. The limit of this is infinity, which is no good at all. The only way the limit of this might not be infinity is if x equals 0 exactly, which would make every term in the limit 0, so the limit of zeros is in fact 0. So this series only converges if x equals 0. This is not a great function. Its domain is only the point 0. It is undefined everywhere else. Here is one more example. The center here is 7, so powers of x minus 7. The term is negative 1 to the n over 2 to the n n factorial, and again I use the ratio test. The ratio will remove all of the powers of negative 1 because of the absolute value, so I don't need to worry about those at all. Then I get this nested fraction for the ratio test. I simplify as usual, which, as is always true for parallel series, will bring the absolute value of x plus 7 out of the limit. The remaining terms will almost all cancel except for 1, 2, and 1 n plus 1 from the factorials. And the result is this limit, which has the value 0. Since the limit is 0 regardless of the value of x, this converges for any x. The domain of this function is all real numbers. This series defines a function for any value of the variable x. The three examples I've done here are in fact demonstrations of all the possibilities. This is the most general way to write power series, coefficients cn, which do not involve the variable x, and powers of x minus alpha, where alpha is some real number called the center of the power series. For this setup, there are only three things which can happen. They can all be described in terms of a number, r, a positive number, also possibly r equals infinity. First, the domain might only be a single number, x equals alpha, just the center x equals alpha is always in the domain, because all powers will be powers of 0, and all that is left is just the coefficient c0. But sometimes this is the only point that works. There are These are, of course, pretty useless functions. A function only defined at one point is not much of a function, but this can happen. In this case, I'll label it with capital R equals 0. Second, the function could be defined everywhere. The series could converge for all real numbers. In this case, I'll label it capital R equals infinity. Third, there could be a positive number, capital R, greater than zero, such that the function is defined within a distance r from the center point alpha. The domain will be from alpha minus r to alpha plus r. The number r is called the radius of convergence. It says for that for all numbers that are within the distance r of the center point alpha, the series converges, and anything that is further away, the series diverges. This radius of convergence idea also works for the previous two cases. If the only point of convergence is the center point, then capital R equals zero means that anything any distance away converges, and if everything is in the domain, then capital R equals infinity means that any distance from the center point still has convergence. And this is how we understand convergence of power series. There is a radius of convergence, possibly zero, possibly infinity, 
and anything that is within the radius out from the center point alpha is in the domain. All power series work this way. Therefore, to understand a power series, to know its domain, I just need to calculate its radius of convergence. I can always use ratio tests to calculate the radius of convergence, as I did in the examples in this video. However, if I have a series where none of the coefficients are zero, there are more some, some more direct ways to calculate the radius of convergence. It can be calculated at the limit of the ratios of the coefficients. Note two important differences here. This is just the coefficients, not the powers of x. And also, compared with the ratio test, the n plus 1 is now in the denominator instead of the numerator. These are some subtle differences, so be careful when using this limit definition. And finally, there is also a root test version of this, which is sometimes useful for calculating radius convergence depending on the type of the coefficient cn. This is all you need to start understanding power series, a center point, a radius of convergence to define the domain, and a way to calculate that radius.